What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video we've got a lot of content to cover. Once again, we have another brand new GPU mineable coin. We're going to talk about that. We've also got the Osprey Caspa FPGA slash ASIC miner. We're going to talk about return on investment. We're also going to talk about Radiant and the difficulty rising. Uh, also, NiceHash is asking people on Twitter what algos they should add. And then we've also got some discussion around Flux once again and proof of useful work. And I wanted to talk about the payment structure of that. And then also Flux's hash rate is dipping right at the moment. And guess what? I guess I've made it. I, am I big time now, guys? I have my first impersonator in the comments trying to hit people up on whatsapp uh let me see if i can pull this up here so if you get a message from someone impersonating me please just don't respond just report that um but yeah we had our first one today <laughs> it looks like they've got my profile pic and a whatsapp phone number here so i will never hit you up on whatsapp i will never ask you for your wallet address i'll never ask you for money i'm never going to try and give you free crypto so be smart don't fall for that kind of junk and yeah give these give these guys a hard time if you see it <laughs> anyway so moving on before we get into it do me a favor hit the like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already so labyrinth is the brand new gpu mineable coin less than 37 hours old and look at this kapow is the algorithm they chose to go with which is very interesting um, they've only got one pool, which is our plant. And if you take a look at their Bitcoin talk page, let's see, I think I have it already pulled up. Yeah. So Labyrinth eliminates the need for trust while transacting on the open blockchain, a complete decentralized solution based on multi-signature and time lock transactions. Labyrinth Core, or Lab, is an open source Bitcoin derived digital currency that serves as the core of our escrow service. It supports the latest features as but not limited to uh, Durz, Durzig? I don't know how to pronounce that, and Taproot. I can pronounce that. Labyrinth Escrow is a platform where multiple parties can transact with each other under predefined conditions without the need for trust. This is possible due to conditions being set and executed similarly to smart contracts. The entire transaction validation happens on-chain, rendering the usual escrow attacks impractical. So it's trustless, secure, decentralized, uh, we've got a timeline here. They talk about development for the core blockchain, Windows and Linux wallets, and that's Q3 of 2022. We're in Q4 of 2022, so they're launching the blockchain, releasing the wallets, securing and expanding the network. Labyrinth escrow idea is finalized and development is in progress. Standalone Kapow Stratum module in beta. And I'll let you guys read the rest of the roadmap here. Um, what I'm looking for here is, okay, we've got halvings at 440,000 blocks, maximum supply of 270 million, founder payment 10%, and block times of 60 seconds. Um, not seeing anything about a pre-mine here. Anyway, if you take a look at their web page, you'll notice they do have a wallet that you can download here. If you don't feel comfortable downloading it from a website and you want to use a secure source, you can use the GitHub. And just a heads up, um, you have to hit the show all 28 assets right here at the bottom. I've already clicked on that. Let's see if I can give you an example. I couldn't find the Windows version. Yeah, there we go. So see, it says show all 28 assets. Once you click on that, then you're going to find your, your Windows downloads here. Now, I do not recommend installing this on your daily driver, nor any PC that you have important information on or is connected to your network that you could potentially run into problems. Uh, I would install this on a virtual machine or some type of PC that has no connection to you and your identity or anything of importance. So something to keep in mind. Um, also, yesterday I had a video about another GPU mineable coin, which was StarCash, 
and I started to talk about KeyMaker, but when I noticed that one of the pools said CPU mining, I just kind of bypassed that as, oh, I guess this is not GPU mineable. But someone corrected me in the comments, and just a heads up, apparently CurveHash is now GPU mineable. Um, so let's do our due diligence on this real quickly and take a look at KeyMaker. So this is the website. Very, very basic. And as far as the Bitcoin talk, I did notice some red flags in here. So uh, it's curve hash. You got your block time of 60 seconds. Coin, Coinbase maturity, 40 blocks. Uh, GPU with ASIC resistance. But here's what caught my attention. 50% will be held for liquidity. 40% will be used for rewards to miners. 5% will be held as liquidity for charity. 5% will be provided to the dev team. And then here's what, what really bugged me. 10% pre-mine will be airdropped starting at launch. 90% will be airdropped at a date to be announced. Airdrops will be handled using Telegram bot. Uh, I, look, when it comes to pre-mines, guys... And if you're not aware, by the way, Library just lost the case against the SEC for this very reason. Uh, the judge basically stated that you can't sell tokens to fund your project without some type of utility to, to have value to the tokens. In other words, you can't just use it to make money. Okay, So if you have a pre-mine, you are essentially using that liquidity to fund your operations. And you can't do stuff like that. If you look at projects like Caspa, Caspa had no pre-mine, no, no VCs, nothing like that. It's all started from the ground up. Those are the kind of projects you want to see. This, you know, pre-mine airdrop distribution, I, I don't know. You know, it's just, it's not my thing, guys. If you want a long-term project, I think that we need to approach things from a different angle because of the way regulation is coming down hard these days. Anyway. Going back to the other new GPU mineable coins, we talked about StarCash the other day. So we got an ETH hash algorithm, a curve hash, and a Kapow. Again, very, very interesting they decided to go with Kapow, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I probably won't be mining any Labyrinth until I can get my wallet installed on a virtual machine. So if you guys want to go for it, go for it. Uh, next, let's talk about the return on investment on this new Caspa miner. So, we talked about this the other day. This is the E300 from Osprey, and it basically is 10 giga hash. Uh, actually, it says up to 14 giga hash here. Uh, initially, I saw 10 giga hash. I'm not sure when that was changed. Anyway, maybe I missed it but at 450 watts. And let's take a look at Casper's price right now. So currently Casper is at 0 0.003973. Let's just call it 0 0.004. So $5,000 not including shipping and tax divided by 0 0.004. It's gonna take you that many days to hit ROI. Or excuse me. No, I totally screwed that up. <laughs> Bear with me here. I swear I'm not an idiot. So 5,000. Uh, let me see here how we do this math. So let's pull up the what to mine calculator real quick. Okay, so take a look at Caspa. We're gonna say, let's, you know what? Let's go 14 giga hash. And at 450 watts. Is this right? Do I have an extra zero in here? Yeah, I think I had an extra zero in there. So you're making roughly about $5 a day in profit. So let's say 5,000 divided by $5.70. And so 
So you're looking at an ROI of 877 days. That is 2.4 years. Man, that, I don't know. I'm not going for it, guys. I would like to see a ROI on an ASIC under a year to two years maximum, not 2.4 years. I mean, if, if you look at what's going to happen to CASPA, uh, the hash rate is only going to continue to increase. This is a phenomenal project, and FPGAs are all over it. In fact, that's what this ASIC is, by the way, guys. Somebody corrected me in Discord and said, stop calling it an ASIC. It's not an ASIC. It's an FPGA miner. And yes, it is. It's made up of three FPGAs. So, you know, an ROI of two and a half years, and, I, you know, considering the price of Casper right now has pumped significantly, uh, over the past week or so, uh, if we look at the all-time high for Caspa, we got up to uh, roughly about 0 .005, I think, was our highest. And we're close to that now. So, you know, what happens if all this stuff with FTX and Sam Bankman Freed, there's a lot of liquidity issues, and next thing you know... Uh, come December or January, Bitcoin is down to 10 grand and Casp is at 0 0.001. Now you're looking at an ROI of like six years. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I believe very strongly in Casp, don't get me wrong, but I'm, I'm not going to go with a two and a half year ROI at this point. I think that's extremely risky and I'd rather purchase one FPGA and play with it and figure these things out before I decide to go spend five grand. That's just my two cents on it. But I don't know. We'll see what everybody else thinks. Perhaps uh, everybody else thinks it's a good deal. It looks like they're still saying to ship around mid-November and they're still available. They are not currently sold out. So I don't know. You be the judge. Next, let's talk about Radiance difficulty skyrocketing. So about October 29th, we had bottomed out at about one in the difficulty, and we are currently sitting at 1.88, and the network hash rate is 43 terahash, which is a significant jump. Um, just our plant alone went from 15 terahash on November 5th, just a couple of days ago, to... 21 terahash uh, ViperNet going from 3.7 all the way up to 4.89 terahash and look at Wooly Pulley they just started their pool not that long ago uh, all the way up to 4.4 terahash now and you would think network difficulty going up I don't know was it 50% I think we were at like 20 terahash about a week ago and now we're sitting at 43 so doubling would reduce the rewards you know in half but guess what uh it's still profitable <laughs> so my farm has 22.7 giga hash at about 2900 watts and with current difficulty that's about 13 dollars a day in fiat and about six dollars a day in profit after power so, you know, I hope that Radiance price continues to climb if the difficulty is going to continue to climb. Uh, but only time will tell. We're just going to have to wait and see. So next, let's talk about NiceHash, asking what algorithms would you like to see at NiceHash? And some of the comments are, are kind of funny. Uh, most of the people are saying either everyone or anything that's profitable. <laughs> Um, surprisingly, I only saw one comment for Flux at the very bottom, and they pretty much mentioned everything else, uh, which was surprising. But you got Meowcoin, uh, you've got Caspa, Shores, I haven't heard of that, uh, versus Yaxa, Caspa, ETHW. So, you know, I, <laughs> there's a lot of choices. Take your pick. Why they don't implement them all? I mean, why not? Is it really that hard? 
I don't know. Maybe maybe it is that hard, but it seems like they would have gotten on top of this a long time ago. It's kind of comical that they've waited. You know, we're basically two months past the merge now, and they're just asking this question. Or maybe they're asking it again. I don't know, but I feel like that should have been accomplished a long time ago. Anyway, so let's talk about Flux one more time. Uh, right now, the difficulty is getting pretty low compared to where it's been over the past month and a half to two months. So we're currently at 1.16, excuse me, 119, not 116. Um, let's look at the year again. Still pretty low compared to just a couple of days ago. On November 1st, we were at 130. So yeah, coming down. Um, but I wanted to talk about a discussion that I had with Jeff Key again about proof of useful work. So one thing that I'm, I'm hyper-focused on, if you haven't noticed, is making sure that the supply of Flux never increases. That, we don't want to see that. And I, I, I guess I'm using leading questions here just to make sure that this doesn't happen. So a thought popped in my head the other day, and I said, will proof of useful work share the rewards with POW and the nodes? If so, what percent? Or is this not certain yet? And to summarize our conversation here, basically what he's saying is that whoever wants to utilize proof of useful work needs to pay for those services in flux. So we're not going to split the current rewards between the miners and the node operators. Whoever wants to utilize the network for proof of useful work needs to purchase flux and pay for that service with Flux. And that's how anybody running Proof of Useful Work is going to get paid, which is an excellent uh, reward structure. And I'm extremely relieved to hear that. And, and I think you guys should be too. But anyways, that is all I got for the video today. Sorry, another long one. But do me a favor, hit that like and hit the subscribe on your way out. And I'll see you guys on the next episode.